There's a dead person on my screen! Calm down, it's just me. Yeah, sorry about all this. No, I look really tired. I am really tired. But let's get this started. Hello, internet friends, and welcome to day four of Halloween Stream Fest 2015. And you might remember Sunday when we talked about eight Halloween facts that you might not know. If you didn't see it, I'll put a link up here somewhere. And today we're gonna be learning a little bit more about Halloween, specifically Halloween urban legends and hoaxes, and whether or not they were true. So with no more hesitations, here we go, let's get into it! Our first urban tale is often known as the Blue Star Tattoo. Beginning in the 1970s, rumors started spreading around that drug dealers were handing out paper tattoos in various shapes that were supposedly laced with drugs like LSD and acid. Some of these tattoos were said to be shaped like blue stars, hence the urban legend name. While other tattoos resembled popular children's characters such as Mickey Mouse and Superman. So, was this a hoax or was this fact? <laughs> this was a hoax. When people first heard about this, they started putting out flyers in the community and started running news reports on it without any actual evidence to back up their claims, just spreading the misinformation. As the years have gone on, the urban legend has continued, but it's gone from flyers to chain letter emails, and certain aspects of this urban legend have altered. For instance, the acid on the tattoos became strychnine, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, I'll spell it here, which is a type of crystalline alkaloid mostly used as a pesticide. And and Homer Simpson was added to the list of characters that the tattoos were shaped in. So where did this legend come from anyways? Back in the 1970s, drugs were kind of around more often, people were experimenting more with it, but in the 1980s, there was a backlash against drug use. And this kind of caused the kids of the 90s to be curious and be like, what are drugs? Which is why the anti-drug memo surfaced. The reason you might still see this urban legend to this day is because of the age of the internet, it makes it very easy to pass along information very quickly. So while it's okay to be concerned about the contents of your kids' candy, you probably don't have to worry about drug dealers approaching them with tattoos and trying to get them hooked. Our second urban legend is Danger Blade Apples. If you grew up in America and you trick-or-treated as a child, you remember getting an apple instead of candy was the worst thing. But you might also remember hearing that kids were finding razor blades inside of their apples. And so your parents would check all your candy for sharp objects and you were like, Mom and Dad, just being paranoid, let me eat the candy. So was this urban legend a hoax or the truth? Unfortunately, this urban legend has some truth to it. Since the 1960s, there have been several cases of tampered Halloween candy in which people will find pins, needles, and razors inside of their candy, though no apples with razors in them. Luckily, only about 10 of these cases resulted in minor injury, and many of the rest of the cases were instances where children were tampering with their own candy, putting pins and needles inside of their own Halloween spoils to get attention from their parents, and more than likely to cause a stir in the community. You remember what I said Tuesday about kids being evil? But luckily, no one has been seriously harmed or injured from finding sharp objects in their candy. So why does the popularity of this urban legend continue even though there's been only a few documented cases since the 60s? It probably has to do with the fact that one night every year, children get to do exactly what their parents are always telling them not to do. Take candy from strangers. The tampered candy urban legends tend to play on our fear of stranger danger. And part of the reason so many parents trick or treat with their kids now instead of letting them run off into groups on their own. And again, stranger danger is still a very relevant worry, but there's no need for a widespread panic on Halloween. Parents should take a gander at their children's candy before giving the all clear. Our third and final Halloween urban legend involves the Halloween House of No Return. This legend passes through word of mouth around each Halloween and claims that there is a haunted house with five different levels that as you progress through each level gets more and more tense and more and more terrifying. So much so that most people end up turning back and not getting a refund while others simply enter the haunted house and are never seen or heard from ever again. It's showed up all over the country and no one can predict where or when it's gonna pop up. But chances are, if you visit, you might not walk out. So reality or hoax? You can probably guess, fortunately, that this is a hoax. And I say fortunately because nobody wants people disappearing on a fun holiday. That ain't fun. There are plenty of haunted house attractions out there that can scare the pants off of you without actually making you disappear. Plus, some versions of this myth say that you have to pay $25 for admission, and if you walk out early before you reach the end of it, you only get $5 back. Or, some versions say that there is no refund. 
So your options are disappear forever or lose 20 bucks. Kind of a lose-lose. So why is this myth still around? My opinion is because it's kind of an easy one. Halloween is the time of year for haunted house and scary things. And combine that with the fact that people who tell this urban legend to their friends often have heard it from a friend of a friend of a friend of a cousin who's married to his uncle friend, and they can't really verify any details about it. Which makes it kind of easy to manipulate the story for your own liking. Plus, there's a lot of interpretation as to the five floors and what kind of scares or attractions you might see inside of the haunted house. And people are always looking for the biggest scare, especially if it's presented as a challenge. People like to prove that they're brave in the face of things that frighten them. Well, internet friends, I hope you enjoyed this little the more you know Halloween session. And remember, when you read something on the internet, before you hit that share button, check your facts. Make sure you're not spreading false information around. While these urban legends are fun, some of them can cause panic and make the day less fun for everyone. And in the comments below, tell me about any of your Halloween urban legends. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. Halloween Stream Fest is over halfway over now, but no worries, I still have three more videos for you. And you'll want to stay tuned for tomorrow's video. I promise. And also, you can follow me on social media. I mainly use Twitter. I'm gonna go now. Thanks for watching, friends. Have a spooky day. Goodbye. This figure was tall, insanely inhumanly thin, which made its head look enormous for its body. Its eyes were bulging, and it was staring at me through the door, and it wasn't blinking. Like, it didn't have eyelids.